All right, guys. Um, uh, back again. So I'm going over the 1.60 update. Um, and in this one, the mover will be automatically the default character. Uh, I'll go over how to change that here in a minute, and I'll discuss the uh, differences and things. Uh, one of the main differences you're going to see is uh, his response time uh, when changing directions. Uh, you'll see it's a lot more sluggish. Uh, that's just the mover, uh, and there's no easy way to change the rotation rate with the mover. I experimented and I was messing around with it, but I haven't really used the mover up until now. So I'm going to have to dig around and do some research and stuff. Uh, because the way they're handling rotation with this mover character, it's not as simple as changing a single variable and suddenly your rotation rate is different. It's not that easy. Uh, so they do, I've played around with their values and I couldn't figure out how to, how to get the rotation rate to speed up, uh, for whatever reason. I don't know. I, I I'm going to have to dig around in it guys. Uh, but I'll look into that and see if I can, uh, uh, get that rotation rate, uh, updated, but you'll see over here, you know, the aim offset stuff, it works with this. So, um, yeah. But, in all honesty, uh, this mover animation system uh, was intentionally made to be sluggish, and they and they made that statement in the live stream as well, uh, in case you didn't watch. <coughs> but if you go back and you watch, uh, you'll see that they did say, yeah, we intentionally made this uh, to be more sluggish. Uh, so some of you guys are going to like this uh, sluggishness because it's going to look more fluid and natural, uh, while some of you guys who want a fast-paced first-person shooter are not going to like it. Uh, so if that's the case, you can come over here to the character folder, and I got my CMC variant right here, and you can come over here and select this, and drop this down, and just replace this reference. And so there's a little bit of naming convention difference here. I'm going to fix that in the next update. It'll, it'll start off with uh, CM. CBP uh, like the other one uh, so they're not using those naming conventions anymore for some reason uh, ignore this I was uh, it's because I copied over the gas project from that one I did the video on the other day uh, on how to basically fix com animation compile issues and a compile build um, but yeah so I'll go ahead and uh, go over uh, some of the changes uh, that I made. So I, I don't think I really made any changes to this, did I? Well, I, I did. I got the parent stuff, and I, I made sure that on this one it happens after all this because I want these to be called before the parent stuff uh, gets fired. Uh, just an order of operation thing. It'll make things more consistent um, and reliable. So... I think that's the only change I made uh, to this. So on, I made a change to the slot manager. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so now I'm using, instead of casting to the character and then getting uh, casting to a character and getting a mesh from it, I'm just passing in an animated mesh. Uh, so I got some new... Uh, stuff here under my interfaces. So if I go under DAO, you'll see asset getters. And these are just getter functions for different assets I I need access to, but I don't want to do a find component by class. I mean, get component by class. Uh, because the thing is, is a lot of people use that and they don't realize how big of a performance hit you actually take by searching through all of this stuff here. Um, there's actually quite a few things here and it has to iterate through a loop uh, until it finds the correct one. Uh, so depending on where things are at in here, it could be a dozen uh, different things it has to iterate through, or it could just be, you know, half a dozen. Uh, but either way, you don't you don't want to do that during runtime if you can avoid it, which is why I'm using Blueprint interfaces. Uh, and the reason why 
I know that Blueprint interfaces are much more performant than using a, a Git component by class is because whenever I was uh, optimizing my slot manager, I was initially just using a, a Git component by class uh, initially, and it was actually causing uh, frame drops uh, whenever I would call those functions on there, which is why I switched away from that and started using Blueprint interface functions for things like that. So just so you know. Uh, that's the reason why I'm doing this now. It's much faster. And it also decouples it. I don't have to cast anything. Uh, and if we come over to one of our weapons, I'll show you some more changes that I made. So basically, I did the same thing with the AC gun. Um, there might be a place or two where I'm casting to a pawn class to get the base aim rotation, but that's because any pawn is going to have access to that function. Uh, so in other situations, oh, yeah. So I might, I might change that actually. Uh, I just realized I'm using a get component by class there. Okay, so in the next update, I'll probably change that. But let's see. Yeah, so I'm updating uh, the mesh every single time I, I go through here because we never know when the mesh has changed. So if the item was dropped and then picked back up, the mesh is going to change. I might refactor that later uh, so that we don't have to call this stuff every single time. We can just call it whenever it's picked up. Uh, I'm probably going to do that. Uh, in a future update just to make it more performant so we don't have to do this extra stuff every single time uh, because that does add some overhead. Um, but yeah, you'll see I'm using the get animated mesh here and right here I'm getting the char mover component right here. If this is valid, uh, then let me just go back to the event graph. If that's valid, then we're going to use the play montage mover actor if not, we're going to use the regular play montage. And then I basically did the same thing on this one, in case you guys were wondering why I changed to those. So, uh, yeah. So over here, let's see, that's the wrong one. Yeah, so I'm no longer doing this stuff here. Um, it probably wasn't a good idea anyway. Uh, so it's, that's not even required anymore because of the changes that I made. So, uh, get char mover comp, right? Same thing over here. If it's valid, that means they have a mover component and we're going to play this. So that's basically, uh, the changes that I made to that. And I had to, uh, make similar changes to the character movement component, uh, variant. Uh, so anywhere that there was a cast to a character, which was actually happening quite a bit on the AC held object master. So I had to make a lot of changes in there in regards to that. So I'd use the blooper interface instead. Um, and then anywhere like in here, in this logic and in, in here, I basically uh, did the same thing, got away from casting to characters since we have the mover component now. But inside of here, it's not really relevant because this is a character. But, yeah, for consistency purposes, I believe there may have been some places in here where I changed that. But anyway, I did have to add uh, the, I did have to implement these interface uh, events here. Um, this does not have a mover component, so that's like not even necessary. Uh, but it does have a contextual item scene actor. And since we can't, uh, since we're not like referencing specific classes, I can just call this to get the contextual item scene component rather than, you know, trying to get a direct reference. Uh, so, I mean, that's basically uh, the only uh, changes uh, that I made. Uh, if, let's see, if we come over here to this, uh, there, oh, there was a fix actually. So, yeah, th this was an oversight on my part. I didn't even realize this was broken when I pushed it last time. 
uh, but the auto equip was actually not working. Uh, and that's beca because, and I made these changes across both of them. If I come over here to the auto equip, uh, I was setting this to true. And then only if this was false, would uh, it get auto equipped and I was never resetting it. So now I'm making sure that the owner resets it. This may or may not be refactored in the future. I thought maybe it wasn't a good idea to rely on the server to have the client reset it. But at the same time, I was kind of concerned about sync issues. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'll probably move that back over to the client to be honest with you because I'm not sure it's a good idea to do that. That's gonna probably cause un wanted unnecessary traffic but anyway the fact is currently right now it's it's working uh so you don't have to worry about that for now and i'll uh, look into some performance uh improvements and stuff on this uh in the future primarily with uh the gun where it's getting this stuff unnecessarily every single time we should be tracking uh, when it's picked up and that's when it'll update that automatically when it gets picked up again And that's probably what I'll move over to uh, so that this only gets updated when it gets picked up And they'll be cleared whenever the item is dropped that way if somebody tries to call uh, this function on it and It's not even being held. I'll probably also do an owner check too uh, Yeah, it's because I just realized I'm not even checking to see if this if that person that called this owns it but anyway even if they did do that it wouldn't work uh because uh server events can only be uh fired on owning clients so that's probably not even necessary i probably won't do that just for that reason because uh if you don't own the weapon then uh the server is going to ignore your request for it to execute that function uh, and that's just stuff that unreal engine handles in the background for you you don't have to worry about it but yeah so i haven't tested uh i like i haven't set set up the npcs to use this system yet so in a future update that's probably what i'll do and you'll see it always resets no matter how many times we go over things so if it gets interrupted because we're doing another traversal it'll just reset the timer and it'll try again after this next traversal and then this will reset it and reset it and then it'll finally go through. So anyway, that's that's uh, basically uh, the rundown on that. And I just noticed that looked kind of weird. I'm gonna look into that. I just saw a, a weird thing with the hips there. Yeah, the hips twisted. There's also a little bit of a uh, blend uh, problem. Oh, it looks like the uh, foot locking. Uh, yeah, I think that's a similar problem than to what the foot placement system was causing. I'll look into that and uh, uh, patch it in the next update, hopefully, if I can find a good solution for it um, so that the animations will be smoother and the feet won't slide if we're idle uh, while the animations are playing, that shouldn't be happening. So I'll look into that um, that little uh, stiffness right there. Uh, I might have to, yeah, right there. Okay, that's that was the, the weird hip problem that I was doing. It might be uh, because of the way that I'm doing this. Uh, so I know I'm rambling on over here. Let me just see here. Is this the mover version? Yeah. So if I come over here, and I open this up. Right here, I am doing a mesh space rotation blend. For accuracy, uh, I might have to reconsider that approach. I mean, it worked in Lyra because, you know, Lyra is kind of like a... Uh, Ly the way Lyra handles their animation system, it doesn't become a problem. Uh, but with this, uh, that could... Uh, cause, let me see, let me pull something out with an animation. Yeah, I think that looks a little uh, less awkward. Yeah, uh, so 
Uh, I mean, it does have to uh, kind of stiffen up. I can't have it perfectly fall on the animation. Uh, I have to layer it onto the upper body here, and I do feather it. Um, so it may look a little stiff if if they're running. I mean, one solution for that would probably be if you were to limit their movement uh, mode to like maybe walking while they're equipping a weapon. Um, but that probably wouldn't be ideal. I'll look into some kind of a solution for that. It does look a bit st stiff and odd when they're jogging and they are playing the animation. Uh, maybe even I might even... Oh, I don't want to say I'll redo that animation because I had to make custom versions of it for all the characters. But uh, anyway, I'll try to find some kind of a solution that'll make that look a little bit better than what it currently does without having to uh, <laughs> remake that animation for like 20 something characters. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, that's basically the rundown. I rambled a lot, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to introduce you to the few changes I made. Not a lot, but I had to make those changes in order to support both a character class and a pawn class character. Uh, so, because the... Because the character movement uh, mover variant is a pawn class, as you can see. It's not a character, so any cast of a character would fail on it, obviously. But yeah, anyway, that's basically the rundown. I'll see you guys in the next video.